Berlin a new coalition government was sworn in on Monday in Austria, and for the first time in more than 10 years it includes the far-right Freedom Party, a watershed for the populist movements that unsettled European politics this year. The return to power of the Freedom Party, which was founded by neo-Nazis after World War II, was concerning enough that Austria's president, Alexander van der Bellen, took the exceptional step of eliciting several promises from the new government before he would administer the oath of office. Those included acknowledging Austria's commitment to European Union and its responsibility to a Nazi past that tore apart the continent last century. M. R. van de Bellen also reminded the new government leaders that they represent everyone in Austria, a rejoinder to a campaign characterized in large part by an antipathy toward immigrants. The new chancellor, Sebastian Kors, 31, is now Europe's youngest leader after winning more than 31.5% of the vote in a snap election in October for the center-right People's Party, a Christian Democratic Party founded at the end of World War II. But he also reflects the ways in which the far-right has reshaped the political agenda in Europe, even among centrist and mainstream parties that could not ignore the populist surge, or do so only at their own peril. M. R. Coors co-opted much of the far-right's political agenda, but to the chagrin of its critics, he gave it a fresh and youthful face in an establishment party, which has now also brought the far-right into government with it. Heinz Christian Strisch, 48 and chairman of the Freedom Party since 2005, will now become vice-chancellor. His party was also given the interior and foreign ministries, as well as the defense portfolio, although the new government pledged to uphold and strengthen Austria's neutral stance. Concerns over the Freedom Party's neo-Nazi roots and its pro-Russia stance led Mr. Van der Bellen to include several checks and balances in the new coalition government agreement. A pro-European direction of the future government is central, Mr. Van der Bellen said in a statement announcing his approval of the coalition agreement on Saturday. Sebastian Kors and Heinz Christian Strisch have assured me that Austria is and will remain a strong country in the heart of Europe and that it will play an active role in the future shaping of the EU, he said. Still, M. R. van der Bellen took precautions to try to insulate Austria against some of the turbulence that populist movements have ushered in elsewhere, including in Britain, where they catalyzed the referendum in favor of leaving the European Union. He insisted that the coalition members agree to language stipulating that the country's participation in the bloc was excluded from increased forms of direct democracy, effectively forcing the far-right party to drop its long-held call for a referendum on the EU. He also insisted that the far-right abandon its desire to set up a home security ministry, warning the country must be mindful of its Nazi past. They seemingly complied in public statements as well as spelling out their policies in the 180-page coalition agreement that was published on Saturday and will serve as a guideline for government policy for the next five years.